as usual, the president's legislation is dead on arrival. Um, where, where do we start? There's funding in it that actually makes the border less secure. <laughs> he has funding that's going to actually uh, make it more, e make it easier for people to ask for asylum and get processed as well. Uh, there's there's funding in there to to give to Hamas uh, so-called aid as well. But mostly, just the problem to me is that he lumps them all together. I don't know about you, but since my earliest beginnings, my mom, my Sunday school top school teachers taught me to support Israel. I think it's the right thing to do. We were raised on our Judeo-Christian values um, that we should stand with Israel. And there is such a big difference between what's going on in Israel versus Ukraine. Ukraine is a seven, nine, ten-year war. America will spend, you can count it, a trillion dollars uh, over the next decade going forward and probably uh, still with the same, same situation and, and tens of thousands of lives will die. Meanwhile, in Israel, we all saw this brutal, savage attack by this. Uh, Hamas army of terror. And what we have there is a battle, a war between the people of Israel and Hamas. And this isn't a, a battle just for Israel, but this is a battle for the future of humankind. And that's why Americans care about the war, the situation there in Israel, but conflict uh, and disagreement on what's going on in Ukraine. Yeah, Senator, I got to be honest, I've been really shocked and surprised at the amount of people that have come out and have called this conflict over in Israel as the genocide of the Palestinians. And they're trying to side with the Palestinians. We see it on college campuses. We see it in the streets of New York City. And I get it. I mean, there are women and children in the Gaza Strip that are victims. We have to acknowledge that. We acknowledge that. We see that because Hamas has been using them as the frontline shields against the Israeli soldiers to, to try and use that as protection because that's how evil these individuals are but uh, I, apparently we have amnesia and we forgot about the actual attack that happened just over two weeks ago when it was hamas that ended up attacking israelis they took hundreds of different hostages they slaughtered individuals at a rave in different parties like what are we missing here right andy um i mean the the atrocities of war are, are photos or pictures that will we will never forget but again the blood of every person since October 7th, the blood of every person belongs on the hands of Hamas and Iran. Mm. Uh, they're the ones that are putting weapons in schools. They're putting weapons in hospitals. They're bombing their own hospitals and trying to, to win this messaging war and blame it on the Israelites. But, but to your point, again, this is not a war on Palestinians. This is a war on the, on the, arm, the terror army of Hamas. Yeah. Uh, even the people there in Palestine would disown Hamas, that they're not very popular either. Uh, so this is a war between this, the terror of, this army of terror and the people of Israel. But it's for the sake of not only Israel, but the enti entire world, for the sake of this future world, that we need to teach terrorists what happens when they do, that when they have these savage attacks. Yeah, amen to that. Well, it's it's going to be hopefully resolved relatively soon, and our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody there. Let's bring it to the home front here, and let's talk about our southern border for a moment, because before this even happened, we've seen tons of migrants coming flooding through our southern border. We have caught many terrorists that were on the terrorist watch list from the Middle East trying to come over our southern border, so who knows how many have actually come through that we didn't catch. But, Senator, what's the total number that we've seen now under the Biden administration? Because they think that everything's hunky-dory right now. Yeah, Andy, well, of course, there's 8 million people that have crossed our border illegally under Joe Biden. 8 million people, that's almost three times the population of Kansas. And I'm not sure if you and your listeners saw this number leaked from the Border Patrol, but over the past two years, 60,000 people of interest is what they call them from the Middle East, from Afghanistan and Turkey and Iran and Syria, 60,000. And on top of that, throw in another 20,000 20, Chinese nationalists. So when people ask me, are you concerned uh, about Ukraine, i got to sit there and say, well, look, I'm much more concerned about my own southern border and what 80,000 uh, people could do as terrorists in our own nation. That's what I'm concerned about, amongst other things. Yeah. Uh, is there, I know just before, actually the week before the attack on Israel, there was the announcement from the Biden administration that they wanted to build like 20 miles of a wall after saying they wouldn't build a wall at the southern border. Is that actually going to happen? It, was the Biden administration true, saying that they wanted to try and lock down the border? Say what? Well, Joe, uh, and I don't know what Joe Biden really wants to do with that. But what I can tell you in this most recent package, this $105 billion package, there's no funding for a border wall. But there is funding so that people can go through the asylum process easier and more mm. efficient. So my last trip to the border, 
I sat there and watched our border patrol on a radio talk to the cartel and say, well, we got this group processed now, bring us over another couple hundred. And they had their smart app and all that. So the president, Joe Biden's priorities are to make the asylum process easier. Uh, so it, so the funding he has here actually makes the situation worse rather than better. That's why I am engaged, uh, and, and, and John Thune is, is leading us over on our side, that there needs to be a policy change. That, yeah. the, that That's what the Border Patrol officers want, some type of a policy change. Remain in Mexico. No more catch and release. Uh, let's raise the bar for asylum. Some simple policy changes could uh, could impact the situation tomorrow and turn off this old Joe Biden electromagnet that's going on down on that southern border. It's wild. If you just widen the door even higher and just create an app, then all of a sudden they're not illegals. They're just coming in legally and we'll totally take care of them, even to the point where New York City says they don't want them any longer, right? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> it. Um, you know, Kansas, we're all overwhelmed with them. And, then, you know, the great tragedy, and this is why I don't know how Joe Biden can sleep, is we're losing 300 Americans every day from fentanyl poisoning. Yeah. Um, you know, 70,000 people in just in the in recent months. So it, that's the tragedy. Just And I'm not talking about human trafficking yet. Um, it, it is truly a humanitarian crisis on our own southern border. It is. I know you've been leading that charge in D.C. regarding the fentanyl issue, so hopefully we can see some ground made on that one as well. We're talking with U.S. Senator Roger Marshall from here in the state of Kansas. My senator, let's talk about the budget for a second. Obviously, this $100 billion bill that's being proposed by the Biden administration is on top of our continuing resolution that we have for at least just a couple more weeks right now. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of changes, obviously, because of what's going on in the House, and we can talk about that in just a minute. But with this continuing resolution and the proposed budget that was on the table before for the next year, we're seeing massive amounts of new money. We're talking $2 trillion. The level of spending that we saw during the COVID-19 pandemic when we shut down the nation and told everybody to stay at home because you're not essential, that would essentially be our new norm of spending in this nation. What can we do about this out-of-control spending, Senator? Well, we need to go back to what we call regular order, a normal budgeting process. Uh, to your point, we're going to spend $700 billion this year on interest alone. Guess what interest rates are going? They're going up. We'll spend $800 billion this year. That's, that's almost as much as we're spending on the military. What, what I'm always shocked about is finding out the reasons behind why things happen up here. I'm, I'm a relatively newbie up here, but Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden want these omnibus. If it's a big omnibus, they can, they can determine what's in it and what's not, and then no one has to defend their bill versus we put all 12 of the appropriations bills one at a time on the Senate floor, on the House floor, then we get to sit there and debate them, and we can point out the bridges to nowhere, and people would be so embarrassed about some of the funding in here that they couldn't go back home. So what can be done about it is just obey our current law. The Budget Act of 1974 clearly shows what we're supposed to do, but they have found workarounds. I'm working with Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, some other folks, uh, Rick Scott, on, on trying to shore that up and put some teeth to it when we don't follow that Budget Act and we don't follow regular order, then let's punish the president, let's punish the appropriators one 